How does the stock market continue to rise when companies announce earnings results that miss even lowered analysts' expectations because the company is reporting higher than expected input costs, sometimes drastic drop-offs in profit margins, stagnant revenues, or massive losses in revenues and other such negative news that clearly shows the fundamentals of these underlying businesses and the world economy in general is worsening and not improving. I'll tell you exactly why stocks and other asset prices can rise at least on a nominal basis despite worsening fundamentals. This phenomenon that defies rational deflationist logic has to do with flow of funds and the near unlimited amount of direct, indirect, and backdoor liquidity central banks like the Federal Reserve are supplying to Wall Street, hedge funds, and large banks. Flow of funds is capital, liquidity, or money moving into and out of different markets, assets, or countries, and then into something else. Retail money has been rapidly leaving the stock market as stock mutual funds have had massive withdrawals for the last few years with that money going into bond funds. Yet stocks on U.S. exchanges continue to be bid up with other money by foreign capital fleeing Europe and flowing into the U.S. Wall Street, banks, and hedge funds are also bidding up stocks in the U.S. But where are they getting all of this money from? After the 2008 crash, large banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, which are investment banks, converted to bank holding companies so they can borrow more amounts of near free money to speculate with in markets from the Fed. Besides converting to bank holding companies, this near unlimited liquidity in the form of such acronyms and hard to remember names as LTRO, currency swaps, reverse repos, and other central banker speak provides Wall Street speculators with digital dollar liquidity that allows them to invest or trade with basically zero interest rate free money and speculate with the money on assets such as stocks and bonds. Money is even starting to flow back into real estate because of how cheap the interest rates in the U.S. are. To put this another way, for Gold Seek Radio listeners, there is near unlimited money chasing a limited amount of shares of stocks listed on U.S. stock exchanges. This money, which is created digitally, is more powerful than demographics, fundamentals, or any other factor people can possibly think of to justify stocks and other assets crashing. Because of this liquidity, at least in nominal terms, assets basically now have a floor built into their price, and the smart money, who has really studied the writings of central bankers and understands how the world financial system works based on the way politicians, banks, and central bankers have changed the system, understands this, in my opinion, better than the deflationists, who are essentially arguing that free market forces will be allowed and that central banks and politicians will be powerless to stop it. In other words, the Fed and other central banks are 100% committed to propping up all assets, but especially real estate and the stock market, on at least a nominal basis. This does not mean those assets will produce a real rate of return or keep up with the real inflation rate, but that is a topic for perhaps another commentary. Ben Bernanke and Greenspan have wrote a number of op-eds in top American newspapers explaining why they want to prop up asset prices for this wealth effect, and they talk about the supposed benefit they think propping up asset prices on a nominal basis will bring to Main Street and the real economy. Many deflationists say the stock market cannot continue to rise, even on a nominal basis, if the fundamentals of the underlying businesses continue to deteriorate. I will explain shortly why they are only partially partially correct, because some companies will fail because their fundamentals will worsen past the point of being able to generate any profits and their stocks will crash. But these deflationists have not, not done a good job of studying the last few hundred years of financial history and similar financial panics and crises betting on all stocks to crash as the amount of levels of interventionism in markets increases more and more each and every day. Certain deflationists say demographics of baby boomers selling assets and no young Americans to buy them will eventually cause a deflation and a drastic crash in all asset prices. Those deflationists are incorrect about asset prices not rising on a nominal basis because their betting demographics will trump a central banker's ability to create unlimited amounts of money and hand it out to politically connected people to buy up assets. Also, foreigners are allowed in the U.S. to buy as much real estate or other assets as they want with their capital. How can the deflationists, who say poor demographics in the U.S. all by themselves, will cause another real estate crash when foreigners from China, Asia, and oil-rich nations are coming into states like Florida, Arizona, Nevada, and California 
and buying up 40 to 50 houses at a time, or sometimes entire streets or tracts of houses for pennies on the dollar. There are many foreigners flush with cash, plus foreign central banks are also devaluing their currencies, and politically connected people in other countries will have access to large amounts of cheap money, as well to buy up productive U.S. assets like real estate and stocks. Some experts say fundamentals deteriorating will cause all stocks to crash regardless of how much money is printed now and going forward. I obviously disagree, and hundreds of years of financial history and many past financial panics prove my point as well. What they are forgetting is one of the main rules of investing in trading markets. That rule is, don't fight the Fed. If the Fed wants inflation and to prop up the stock market on a nominal basis, it will get what it wants, unless the power to create money out of thin air is taken away from it. Congress cannot even have the honesty and courage to do the right thing and vote to get a one-time full audit of the Fed, let alone routine audits. It was worse than pulling teeth for Ron Paul to, to even get a one-time partial audit of the Federal Reserve. I see no signs that the Fed's power to create unlimited money out of thin air and give Wall Street, large banks, hedge funds, and other economic and political insiders more free money to speculate with from being stopped anytime soon. In conclusion, whether we like it or not, we are in a situation where markets are being managed higher on a nominal basis, and there is blatant market manipulation taking place in directly or indirectly in every market on the planet thanks to interest rate manipulation at the very minimum. Some markets are obviously more manipulated than others. This is being done to continue to prop up asset prices by the Federal Reserve, who still believes in the benefits of the wealth effect, despite evidence what the Fed is doing is hurting Main Street and only helping Wall Street and D.C. This does not mean every stock price will go up evenly, as some businesses, especially ones more heavily cyclical and more heavily leveraged to large amounts of U.S. consumer discretionary spending, will continue to have their fundamentals deteriorate more rapidly than a consumer staples type of business. Just because there is massive intervention in markets does not mean that money cannot be made investing or trading in these markets. For further information and education on how to protect your capital and learn how to invest, please check out the Wall Street for Main Street website at wallstforminst.com.